Hey guys, welcome back to Glimpse It Recaps. Today we are recapping a movie called Secretary, where we follow a girl named Lee who falls for her boss. The film begins with Lee Holloway leaving a mental hospital on the day of her sister's wedding. She anxiously waits for her mother, Joan, to pick her up. Joan greets her with cheerfulness, but Lee just stares blankly. At the wedding, Lee watches her sister kiss her new husband and applauds politely. Peter, an old friend, asks if she's happy to be home. She nods but admits she's unsure when he asks again. During the wedding reception, Lee's father, Bert, greets her with a beer in his hand. Lee thought he had quit drinking, but he ignores her concern. Clearly intoxicated, he continues drinking. Lee soon retreats to her room, where she finds her old belongings. She takes out a doll and seems about to cut herself, but stops when she sees her sister and her husband driving away in a luxury car. That night, Lee overhears her parents arguing about various issues, including Bert's job. She watches as her father pushes Joan to the ground before storming out. Later, in her room, Lee pours boiling water into a kettle and burns her thigh with it, finding a strange comfort in the pain. The next day, Lee attends a typing class, showcasing her excellent typing skills. Afterward, her mother picks her up, and on the way home, Lee recalls a past incident where Joan carefully hid knives, explaining it was for safety. Back at home, Lee goes outside to throw away trash and finds her old sewing needle and thread bag in the garbage. She also picks up a newspaper page with job ads. Lee reviews the job listings and practices interview lines. The next day, she goes to an address from the newspaper. Upon entering, she notices a woman leaving the office in tears, leaving a mess behind. Undeterred, Lee proceeds to meet Mr. Gray, the boss. He's looking at a photo of a blonde woman when Lee arrives. After some brief introductions, he asks Lee some odd questions, like whether she's pregnant and if she lives in an apartment. As they continue the interview, Mr. Gray shows her a beautiful garden outside his window, impressing Lee. She hands him her typing results, but he seems distracted. He asks her to make coffee, and she goes to the pantry, accidentally spilling water on herself while refilling the cooler. Returning with the coffee, Mr. Gray comments on the job's potential monotony and suggests Lee try to relax, but she admits she doesn't know how. Before she leaves, he advises her to use less sugar in the coffee next time. Outside, Lee excitedly tells her mother she got the job. At home, she practices for her first day while soaking in the bathtub. Lee's first day involves various tasks, running errands, organizing paperwork, and managing different responsibilities. She often peeks into Mr. Gray's office, watching him tend to the garden. One day, she enters his office to deliver some donuts and finds him discarding some notes. She volunteers to search for them in the trash. Mr. Gray watches her intently as she retrieves the file, only for him to say he already found a copy. He then assigns her more tasks. Lee struggles to set a mousetrap under Mr. Gray's watchful eyes. He checks her work and they exchange a silent, intense gaze. When the phone rings, she answers, only to be dismissed by Mr. Gray, who's now looking at a wound on her arm. Embarrassed, Lee packs up to leave. Mr. Gray watches her from the door, showing concern. After work, Lee discusses her day with her mother. Joan mentions Peter called, which makes Lee smile. She meets Peter at a laundromat, where they talk about how much they've changed since high school. Mr. Gray unexpectedly walks in and sees them. He quickly leaves, seemingly disturbed. The next day, Mr. Gray scolds Lee for three typographical errors in a letter. Lee apologizes awkwardly, but he continues berating her. He insists she retype the letter multiple times, frustrating her. She eventually submits the corrected letter, and Mr. Gray comments on her attire and restlessness, making her more self-conscious. Later, Mr. Gray calls her into his office to pick up the phone, although it's not ringing. He mimics the sound and instructs her on how to speak more confidently. Their conversation shifts to her relationship with Peter, and she laughs it off when asked if they've slept together. Mr. Gray then asks about her wound and the sewing tool she carries, surprising her. He offers her hot chocolate and questions why she hurts herself. Lee admits she doesn't know. Mr. Gray suggests she walks home to clear her mind, indicating he understands her pain. 
Lee takes his advice and starts walking home, realizing she has feelings for Mr. Gray. The next day, Mr. Gray berates her again for spelling mistakes, making her sniffle. He calls her into his office and instructs her to read a letter while bending over his desk. As she reads, he suddenly spanks her. Shocked, she stops, but he orders her to continue. Despite the oddity, Lee seems to enjoy the experience. Afterward, she returns to her desk and hands the corrected letter to Mr. Gray. He praises her work, making her laugh. At home, Lee tells her mother they can now remove the lock on the cabinet. The next morning, she throws her old belongings into the river, symbolically letting go of her past. At work, Mr. Gray gives her various tasks and she eagerly follows his orders. That night, as she prepares for bed, she touches herself, thinking about Mr. Gray. The next day, Lee intentionally makes a mistake in a letter, hoping Mr. Gray will notice. When he ignores her, she feels disappointed. At Peter's house, she tours with his parents, but her mind is on Mr. Gray. Later, Mr. Gray instructs her to pick up a ringing phone, which is not ringing and critiquing her confidence again. Lee admits to dating Peter, but dismisses the idea of them sleeping together. He inquires about her wound and sewing tools, indicating he understands her. Days pass, and Mr. Gray distances himself from Lee, throwing away the red marker he used to correct her work. Lee tries to replicate the sensations she felt with Mr. Gray, but fails. He gives her a severance pay letter and tells her to leave. She walks out crying, feeling heartbroken. Lee continues pretending to go to work, watching Mr. Gray's office from across the street. She notices he has hired a new secretary. Frustrated, she tries to move on but finds herself unable to. She later attempts other relationships to find fulfillment, but is unsatisfied. Peter proposes and she agrees, feeling like she has no other choice. While trying on a wedding dress, Lee removes the veil and rushes to Mr. Gray's office, confessing her love. Mr. Gray rejects her advances, telling her she can't work for him anymore. Mr. Gray tells her to place her hand on his desk and keep it there until he returns. Lee does as instructed, waiting for him for hours, even days. News reporters cover her story, drawing public attention. After several days, Mr. Gray finally returns to the office. He holds Lee, giving her comfort. They share an intimate moment as he prepares a bath for her, gently washing and drying her. He examines her scars, and Lee feels beautiful for the first time. The next day, they start a new life together, like a regular couple. They eventually get married and live happily, embracing their unique bond.